Hi, welcome to another episode of Youth Diary. Cancer begins in our cell, which are the building blocks of our body. Today we are going to discuss about the gynecologic cancers. And to help us, we have Dr. Manoj Papu with us. He is a gynecologic oncologist at Kinder Hospital, Chertala. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Welcome to our show. Uh, doctor, can you just explain what is a gynecological cancer? Gynecological cancer includes all uh, tumors which involve the female genital organ. That means uh, the uterus or the womb which where the baby grows, then the lower part of the uterus or the neck of the womb that we call medically as cervix, then the ovaries uh, where the eggs are formed and finally the tubes which connect the ovary with the tube, I mean, I mean the uterus. And also rarely we get cancers of the birth canal that is the vagina and also the external genital organ that is vulva. But the common ones, as I have told, it's the uterus, the cervix and the ovaries. Uh, we'll go to the questions. Right. Hello ma'am, I'm Gayatri Vijay Kumar, a second year MBBS student from CMC Kochi. My question is, uh, what is the chance of getting gynecological uh, cancers? Is it related to lifestyle? Okay, gynecological cancers are very much related to lifestyle even though uh, that contributes only to a minority because the main factor is genetic and environmental factors. So to coming to the lifestyle factors, one is the overweight. So those who are overweight has have roughly around say 10 times more risk than, than those who are of normal weight to get cancer of the womb or the uterus. Similarly, uh, say if you have a healthy sexual life, your chance of getting cervical cancer comes down drastically because 99% of the cervical cancer of the cancer of the neck of the womb is caused by a virus which is transmitted sexually. Then comes the importance of dietary factors like you should have a healthy diet rich in vegetables, fruits and you should have regular exercise as I have told earlier to maintain a good weight. Also it's important to have a regular checkup with your doctor and do a pap smear that is one test which is quite reliable in detecting uh, cancer of the cervix even before it starts. So that's important. And finally, uh, it's important to get vaccinated as well. So that is something which can prevent this infection as I have told earlier. Then many other cancers of the, uh, like the ovary and all are much, not much related to your lifestyle. Uh, and finally, having children, that's very important. Like have your children at a young age, like say in their 20s before you cross 30s, if you complete childbirth and have two children, or three, you have a lo you lower your risk of chance chance of getting gynecological cancers, and also it's important that you breastfeed your babies. So these are the steps probably you can take. Uh, doctor, how do they present? The I symptoms. Mean, symptoms. Uh, symptoms. Symptoms. Uh, symptoms is ovarian cancer is something which I'd like to tell it is present with all non-specific symptoms. So that is something which you cannot. So any change in your day-to-day -day uh, change in your uh, tummy, uh, any new pain which lasts for more than two weeks or any abnormal bleeding which lasts again lasts for more than two weeks or change in your bowel or bladder habits you have to report to your doctor. And about cervical cancer of the cancer of the neck of the womb it presents with bleeding especially after sex. As I have told these symptoms again will present only at a later stage. So screening is very important, early detection is more important then uh, other mainly it's abnormal bleeding okay uh, dr ipam uh, you have uh, told about pap smear yes uh, how frequently do we have to go for that pap smear the present recommendation uh, is to start at the age of 21 and do it every uh, three years till you are 30 and thereafter every five years till the age of 65 uh, when when we put it in the indian country indian situation like even if you do it every five years uh, that will be fine that is after the age of? After the, it's, it's arbitrarily taken as 21. It's, uh, once you become sexually active, it is recommended to go for a pap smear. Okay. Yes. Okay, doctor, we'll see the questions. My name is Fatima Salim and I'm from Kuch, uh, CMC Kochi. And my question is, one of my, one of my classmates is having a tumor in the ovary mm -hmm. and, uh, and as, as advice for f surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it a cancer? And um, uh, can she have children in future? When you told your classmate, I presume that she is not married. So any tumor on, or any lump on the ovaries, say, if it's more than about 8 cm off, it has a lot of solid areas when you do a scan or if there are thick septae or if the scan shows that it has 
abnormally increased blood flow generally it is uh, good to go for surgery and surgery doesn't mean that uh, taking away the reproductive capacity most of the time the type of cancers which are uh, I'm not telling that this is your friend is having cancer even if it is cancer at your age the what we get is a special kind of cancer known as germ cell cancers and they are uh, quite uh, well treatable and curable like most often we can get away by removing only the ovaries or part of the ovaries uh, only on one side and you can uh, you need not remove the other ovary tube as well as the uterus so in that way the fertility can be preserved and even if it is cancer as I have told you can give a chemotherapy after the surgery and they can as well have children as I have mentioned uh, other than this uh, surgery is yes. there any medical treatment for uh, surgery is the first line of treatment in these situations because directly going for a medical treatment or chemotherapy is not recommended first of all you don't have a diagnosis unless you do surgery and for ovarian cancer always once you do surgery uh, you just remove you are removing the tumor and also you are doing a staging to see whether it has spread to any other areas and most of the time if it's a well localized tumor within the ovary you don't need to go for any further chemotherapy and in such situation you will be over treating them by giving chemotherapy of course which does have side effects so chemotherapy is only uh, you know as as and when required like how long we have to go for a chemotherapy generally uh, it's for usually six cycles but it varies from time the depending upon the type of cancer that individual stage of the disease and the response to treatment sometimes even if you plan for three cycles or six cycles if we see that the patient is responding with two or three cycles we may have to switch to another type so it's it's variable okay uh, doctor does it run in uh, families ovarian cancer yes it does run in families uh, roughly 10 percent that is uh, one in uh, 10 cases of ovarian cancer is familiar or it's inherited uh, and that, those are the ones which are found in much younger age group mm -hmm. and especially those who have uh, close family, first degree family relatives like your mother, sister, father or brother, like those if more than two of them have either breast or ovarian cancer, you need to check for, uh, you would need to go for gene testing to detect whether you have any abnormal genes. Uh, we'll see the next question. Hi ma'am, uh, I'm Ruby Fatim, I'm a second year MBBS student okay. in studying Kochi Medical College. Uh, I have read in magazine about cervical cancer uh, vaccine. Okay. Is it really effective and what are side effects? Cervical cancer vaccine is a wonderful drug which has come up in the last few years. Uh, it's all it's very effective like you can prevent up to 70 percent of all cervical cancers if you get the all the three doses of this vaccine and uh, as I have told up to 30 percent uh, cancers cannot be prevented because this vaccine is focused or it, it fights against certain type of human papilloma viruses which cause 99 percent of all cervical cancers so uh, most this there are two type of vaccine presently available one is uh, one fights against the two most common type of uh, cancer causing human papilloma viruses the other one fights against four four type of viruses so other there are these are the common viruses so uh, sometimes cervical cancer can be caused by some other vi viruses as well so this is recommended uh, by at around 11 to 13 years for all girls and uh, you can come down even up to even up to as low as nine years and the upper limit is of recommended uh, age is 26 years so in our indian scenario especially when our girls become sexually active at a later age so you can even uh, give it uh, as i've told maybe 16 years or 18 years at any time so it's quite effective and you've also asked about the side effects side effects are uh, quite uh, very rare actually and even if side effects occur they are pain some dizziness and uh, some headaches kind of things it doesn't cause any serious side effects and about the long term studies about this vaccine we have heard data about six to seven years there is uh, the, the the studies have shown that the immunity against the uh, viruses have not come down at all after six to seven years of follow-up we need to make wait for some more years to get more data about it uh, doctor how many doses we have to take it is uh, three doses which is uh, given at an interval of about three to six months once you complete the three dose of vaccination you can expect to have a lifelong immunity so, so uh, that is what we know at present uh, it uh, protects only the cervical cancer it, it does uh, i told you there are 
two two vaccines. The one which the the quadrivalent vaccine also protects against certain non-cancer tumors like genital warts. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are also help, helpful in preventing these as well. Okay. Yes. okay. And another interesting fact is that even in Western countries, people even uh, give it to boys because sexual transmission. If you prevent uh, boys getting uh, human papilloma viruses, you can as well uh, prevent uh, it getting transmitted to girls. That means it's a sexually transmitted. It term. is definitely a sexually transmitted disease. Yes. yes. Okay, we'll see the next question, Doctor. Hi, ma'am. I'm Aida Mary from CMC Kuchi. I've got a question. My friend has severe pain during her periods. The scan said that she has endometriosis. Mm -hmm. So, what's the best treatment for her? Endometriosis uh, is something which uh, is very common nowadays. That is basically the lining of the inside lining of the womb or the uterus is, happens to be on the sometimes on the ovaries and rest of the inside rest of your, the lower part of your abdomen. So when you get periods, it will bleed in the abnormal location and you get pain. So as you, your friend is having uh, endometriosis, but uh, I presume that she's also no, she's not married. So uh, presently, it is uh, better to go for any medical treatment. First of all, uh, good painkillers during at the time when she has periods. And if it's not getting control with that, she can go on, to, on hormone tablets, say for a period of three to six months. And one uh, suggestion which I have for her is to get married as soon as uh, possible and maybe plan your childbirth. And at any stage if she finds it difficult to conceive, she can as well go for surgery. And uh, so, so surgery is recommended primarily for those who have already married. And after immediately after surgery is the best time for her to conceive. And uh, again, repeat surgery is not advocated because each time you go do surgery for endometriosis, you are damaging the ovaries. So that will have an impact on your future childbearing capacity. Uh, doctor, this endometriosis, is it related to cancer? Not really. Endometriosis as such is not cancer. It is not uh, uh, abnormal. It is the normal endometrium which is present in abnormal location. So it doesn't uh, multiply very fast like cancer. But there are a few type of cancers which can occur in a pre-existing endometrium, but that's quite rare. So uh, the primary concern about endometriosis is the pain, the pain as well as the difficulty in to become pregnant and the long term implication is that uh, it will affect the overall emotional uh, function of the patient and sometimes they may need to undergo a hysterectomy. So it, it is not related to cancer. Doctor, our next question. Hi ma'am, my name is Bensi Joseph mm -hmm. and I have a question please. Um, I have heard that the cancer can be cured when it is detected at early stage. What are the available options for the detection of gynecological cancer? So as you have rightly asked, uh, prevention is probably the best way to fight cancers. So if, as far as gynecological cancers is concerned, the only cancer which can be very effectively prevented is the cancer of the neck of the womb or the cervical cancer. What we recommend is a pap smear, which I have already told, like you take a small uh, smear, that is you rotate a small spoon-like, uh, wooden spoon-like thing just beside your cervix and whatever you get, you put it on a slide and send it to the, to the doctor, the pathologist for uh, look, have a, to have a look under the microscope. From this only you can detect what we call as precancers. So precancers are something which over a period of time can progress to cancer. So once you detect precancers, you can very simple, we can treat by just removing that small portion of the cervix by operation which is not, which doesn't even require an anesthesia. So the recommendation as I've told is you do it, start doing it once you become sexually active say after 21 years, do it every 3 years till you are 30 and thereafter every 5 years till the age of 65. Then coming to other cancers like and next is ovarian cancer of the cancer of the ovary. We do not really have a good test so far to detect it early. So you be uh, you be aware of yourself. You know about your body, and if any new symptoms like any pain or aches in your abdomen or the tummy, or if any change in your bowel or bladder habits, as I've told earlier, you report to your doctor and get a gynecological evaluation as well, because it's it's very non-specific. Then there are some studies going on in uh, Western countries like doing a scan, an ultrasound scan or the every every year and doing a blood test known as CA-185 and whether it can help us to detect ovarian cancer. But they are quite expensive and it's not practical to do it on a uh, large scale. 
and coming to uterine cancers most of the time uterine cancers present at very early stage with abnormal uterine bleeding so many times we don't have a problem like they don't present in advanced stages and even if at all uterine cancer most of the time you can treat it very effectively and it is uh, almost 100 percent curable then uh, vulval cancer again the cancer of your external genitalia there are no effective screening tests again since it is outside any changes any uh, small ulcers which doesn't heal or any persistent itching anything you have to report to your doctor to detect it early so again as to sum up the only effective cancer which can be prevented is cervical cancer is by doing a pap smear on a regular basis uh, doctor we have got a mail okay uh, it's from Kasrubot. One of my aunties have a huge lump in the uterus. The doctor said it's as big as a five-month pregnancy and advised for an open surgery. Is it okay to have a keyhole surgery? Yes, it's quite, quite possible. Like uh, a lump in the uterus, the commonest one is fibroid uterus as many of, of you might have heard about. So five months of pregnancy is like it's almost just below your belly button or your umbilicus. So it can very well be tackled uh, by a laparoscopic surgery. Well, only pro thing is that you may have to remove it laparoscopically that using a special instrument known as mausolator or partially it can be removed from down below that is vaginally. The only situation where you need to think of an open surgery is when we suspect cancer. So since you, uh, if, if the scan finding or uh, clinical, if there is no clinical suspicion of a cancer, you can go for keyhole surgery, it's quite safe and generally size is not a big problem with laparoscopy what is as long as you can visualize it well with your camera you can do a better job with laparoscopic surgery than open surgery because of the better visualization and the magnification you have i think i made it clear and how do they do this uh, laparoscopic surgery you said like uh a five month uh, like as because yeah, of five month as i've told it's below the it's usually uh, laparoscopes are put in the belly button or the umbilicus but for bigger tumors we go much above that and we can put in the scope and basically the laparoscope is basically a camera so, so to see it is a big tumor you have to go a little farther that is a basic thing so as long as you can have a good visualization you can tackle any size laparoscopically the only problem is again i stress the good visualization and anything else can be handled you know doctor like how do you remove this uh, big car yeah that's why i was trying to tell you like uh, there are two ways of removing it either you have an opening natural opening below that is a vagina once you are removing the uterus you can remove it vaginally and sometimes you may have to reduce the size using a special laparoscopic equipment known as mausolator so that with that you can reduce the size of the tumor and remaining you can remove from vagina by cutting it so that means doctor uh, she can go for a keyhole surgery yes obviously because see if you do a laparoscopic surgery usually what we do is we discharge the patient the the, the very next day mm -hmm. so th that's quite you know uh, the recovery is quite fast so for a big tumor the, the, in fact the advantages are more in a bigger tumor because you need a bigger cut to remove a bigger tumor if you do open surgery but with laparoscopy she will have a very small cut like any other laparoscopic surgery for this big tumor and she will be happy at the end of the day uh, how many days rest she has to take uh, if see okay, okay. after open surgery we tell uh, say three two to three months rest but laparoscopic surgery I usually tell my patients to be to, to be to restrict their activities for the first one week and do not do any hard work for the say for another one month because they don't have a they only need to have a good healing of the you know the all the pedicles or the vessels leading to all the organ which we are removed otherwise uh, it doesn't take much time for the uh, wall, wall that the wound on the abdominal wall to heal. Doctor, it was really informative. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us. Thank you so much. So friends, write your suggestion to us. Our email ID is youthdairyroseball at gmail.com. See you next week.